Welcome back to the sawmill, friends. Today we're down in the timber frame starting another project down here. And I've also got a load of logs to go pick up in about maybe two hours, maybe sooner. As soon as he calls, I've got to head across the road and pick up probably two loads of white pine logs. So we'll probably have to stop here in just a little bit and go take care of that. But what we're gonna work on right now is finishing up the trim right here on the top on this wall. And once we get that finished up, I'm gonna start building a lumber storage rack that would go against this entire wall. This wall is 14 feet long. So we're gonna have lumber storage and store it vertically straight up and down against this whole wall right here. I think it's gonna work out pretty good. So let's finish up this trim real fast so we can start on this rag. I really need this done today because the kiln is full of black walnut. Well, it's got about 800 board feet in there. I need to bring that walnut out of the kiln. If I got this storage rack done, I could put most of it over here and not have it just stacked in the floor in my way because I need to empty the kiln because I've got some cedar and pine I'm getting ready to saw up and I can dry those together from green and those will go directly into the kiln so we could dry that and then put up our shiplap on the rest of the walls in here with that pine and the cedar for the door. So I've got a lot of plans going on but one thing always hinges on another. And today, everything is hinging on getting this lumber rack done so I could bring the wood in from the kiln in order to free that up. I think all that made sense. All right, guys, let's take a quick break from working on that lumber rack. I went ahead and got the base started, but now we're gonna hook up the dump trailer and go get some logs. All right, friends, we're back down here at the shop. I need to finish up this base. I need to cut about three more two by fours to put in here for ribs. And then we'll put a plywood sheet on top of this. 
And if you're wondering why I'm building a base for this, I'll explain that here in a few minutes. All right, guys, I've got the base done. And the reason we have a base for this wood rack is I want to keep the wood off the concrete. This concrete slab is insulated, but there is moisture in it. And if you put lumber directly on that, it's going to draw up the moisture. Now I know there is two by fours right there on the floor laying on the concrete. They will absorb some moisture, but that's okay. They're sacrificial boards because my really nice black walnut and cherry that comes out of the kiln and all my maples and my oats will have a nice place to be stored right there, not laying directly on the concrete. Therefore, the moisture will not go up in those boards. If I had those boards in here with the end grain directly on this concrete, they would absorb moisture, guys. It, it will happen. So always try to keep your lumber off the concrete. Put something under it. Plywood, two by fours, or a base like this is ideal. Now the base is pretty much done right here. I did put a scrap piece of poplar on the front of this, kind of like a toe kick. That way if I got boards and I'm looking through them, it will keep them from sliding off hopefully. The next thing we need to do is work on these two two by fours. I got one at three foot and one at six foot up from this base. And on these, we're gonna have our black pipe come out with chains, which will stabilize the wood in different areas, make like little rows or different sections rather for like cherry and maple, walnut and so on. And I'll put chains connecting those as a safety feature, just so they don't come forward and fall over one day. I think it's gonna look pretty good guys. I think it's gonna look pretty good. All right, friends, I'm gonna run up to the house and eat some dinner. I'll be back here in about 30 minutes. So go ahead while I'm gone. And if you don't care, Grab a broom. This place needs cleaned up. It's a mess in here. I got sawdust everywhere. But if you guys will take care of that for me, go ahead and grab you a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. And, and also, also, while I'm gone, hit that like button for me. It helps these videos out. I'll be right back. All right, friends, we got it done. I think it looks pretty good. I got about half a dozen two by fours. I was tired of uh, walking around down here. Now I got somewhere to put them. And this rack, even though it is pretty handy, it's gonna fill up fast, friends. I can kiln dry 4,000 board feet at a time. And that's more than these rats will hold. So I need to start thinking about probably building some more of these on some different walls in here. Maybe over around the planer, somewhere like that. Or maybe long term, think about building a separate building just for lumber to go in, it comes out of the kiln, I don't know. 
It's good problems to have, but it definitely is a problem to have when you run a sawmill. Infrastructure is something that you're always, seems like you're always trying to come up with different ideas to come up with infrastructure because you have equipment to cover up. And now a lot of dry lumber coming out of the kiln, it needs to be in a climate controlled place. Good problems to have, but it, it's always there, it seems like. So thanks for watching, friends. I really appreciate it. We'll see you guys back here tomorrow. We're gonna to start sawing up some cedar and some pine. That way we can put that straight into the kiln and dry it so we can make some shiplap for the rest of the walls in here. Before we go, we got a visitor with us tonight. Hello, Cabbage. How you doing there, buddy? <laughs>